Now that we have an understanding of what a set is, it's going to be important for us to be able to communicate about them, most specifically in writing. And while it's true that we can often describe them in words, that's not always the easiest or most effective way to do it. To give an example that may feel a little bit more familiar, in algebra, I could describe an expression by stating something like, the product of a number in five divided by the sum of five and the number squared. There's nothing incorrect or inaccurate about doing it this way. However, it takes a lot less energy to dissect and understand the statement if it's just written as the expression 5x over the quantity 5 plus x squared. This can apply similarly for set theory too, and so we'll have to discuss proper notation for sets so that we can express them symbolically as well. Note that when I say proper notation, I just mean in a way that is generally agreed upon by mathematicians. Just like we all agree to the rules of grammar in order to effectively communicate using the English language, we'll agree to some standards of notation so that we're all on the same page when writing with the math language as well. So how can we actually represent sets in writing? Well, there are two main ways. The first is called roster notation. Now, when I hear the word roster, my first association that my brain jumps to, and maybe yours too, is like a classroom roster. Your class at school has a certain group of people, and if we were to list those names out, it would be called the class roster. This is a good way to think about roster notation for sets too, because just like a classroom roster lists the names of the students in the class, roster notation is essentially just a list of all of the elements that belong to the set. For example, if we wanted to discuss the set of all odd numbers less than 10 and greater than 0, we could write these out as 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, listing each of the elements that satisfy that criteria. Let's notice some details here. First, we always indicate that something is a set with curly brackets. This allows us to distinguish from things like ordered pairs written with parentheses. Also, we write commas between the different elements to distinguish those as well. So we could also write something like 2, 4, 6, 8 to represent the set of even numbers less than 10 and greater than 0. This is a really great way to express small sets in writing because it's explicitly clear what elements belong to the set versus what elements do not. However, sets with a large number of elements, or possibly even infinitely many, will sometimes be much more difficult to describe in this way, so we have another option as well. The second notation we'll typically use to describe sets is called set builder notation. Now recall that a set is defined by some objective, well-defined criteria. Elements belong to a set if they meet that criteria and they don't if they do not. Well, we can express a set by listing its criteria. Once again, we'll use curly brackets here to indicate we are describing a set, but here we'll begin with an X and a vertical bar. Now, this stands for such that, or it can be read as elements x such that, and then list the criteria that need to be satisfied. For example, if we wanted to describe the set of all numbers greater than 5, we could write x such that x is greater than 5. This works great here because there are infinitely many numbers greater than 5, and so it would be impossible to list them all out using roster notation, but set builder makes this really simple and concise. Each notation has its pros and cons in this way, but it's important to be familiar with both as they will both be used regularly depending on which is easiest given the set itself and the context. Now, in addition to just representing sets in writing, we also often care about expressing when an element belongs to a set or not, and so we have some notation for this as well. We'll use this symbol, which looks kind of like a curved capital E, to denote when an element does belong to a set. You can read this symbol directly as it belongs to, is contained in, or is an element of. For example, we might write 2 belongs to the set 2, 4, 6, 8. Or if we called W the set of weekdays, we might say Monday is an element of W. To denote when an element does not belong to a set, we use the same symbol with a slash through it. This translates directly to does not belong to, is not contained in, or is not an element of. For example, one is not an element of the set 2468. This notation will frequently be used when outlining the criteria of a set in set builder notation too. 
For example, to describe the set of integers less than five, we would write x such that x belongs to the integers and x is less than five, where this z represents the set of integers. To elaborate on this a little further, we use certain blackboard bold letters for common sets like integers, natural numbers, real numbers, and rational numbers. So we would write R for real numbers, Q for rationals, Z for integers, and N for naturals. So again, when we write X such that X is an element of Z, this Z represents the set of integers. And so this means X is an element of the integers and X is less than five. This tells us that this set is made up of any element x where x belongs to the set of integers and is less than 5. Finally, we also have a designated symbol for a set with no elements at all. This is called the empty set. The empty set is the set with no elements and is denoted with either two brackets or the empty set symbol. To be clear, this is not a zero. And also note that when writing your zeros, you should not slash them to avoid confusion. This represents a set with no elements. It is possible you've actually seen this symbol before as well, maybe in context of algebra. You may remember that if you were solving an equation or systems of equations and you had no solutions, you would write this. That is because the solution set contained no elements. In other words, there were no solutions, there were no elements that belonged to that set. Now that we have all the tools we need to express sets in writing, let's look at a few examples. For each of the following, we'll express the given set, described in English, in both roster and set builder notation. So first let's consider the set of even natural numbers less than 20. Recall here that natural numbers are our counting numbers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth. Even numbers are any number that is a multiple of 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on and so forth. And so to write these in roster notation, we have to list all of those that meet both the criteria all the way up to, but not including, 20. And so we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 remembering to wrap these in curly brackets. To write this in set builder notation, we can start again, as always, with the curly brackets and the x such that, or the x vertical bar, and then list the criteria that need to be satisfied. So in our case, that's x such that, x is an element of the natural numbers, so we can write x and then this curved e, natural numbers. We have to be a little bit more careful and precise with how we describe even numbers. So since even numbers are a multiple of two, what we can do is we can say, these also have to satisfy the criteria that they are two times k for k an integer, or for k belonging to the set of integers. And x is less than 20. Next, we can take a look at the set of natural numbers between 7 and 11. Now, for roster notation, this is fairly straightforward. All we need to do is list all of the natural numbers that fall between those two values. And so we have 8, 9, and 10. For set builder notation, we can start with a bracket, an x, such that, and then list the criteria. In this case, those criteria are x belonging to the natural numbers and x being between 7 and 11. Now, we could write out in words x is between 7 and 11, but we have a better way to do this. We know that between 7 and 11 means that it has to be greater than 7 and also less than 11, and so we can put an inequality like this. And finally, let's take a look at the set of real numbers less than 2 and greater than 4. Now, you may try to write this in set builder notation and list out those criteria. X is less than two and X is greater than four. But if we think about this a little bit more thoroughly first, we might identify that there actually are no numbers that are simultaneously less than two and greater than four. And thus, this set actually has no elements. Since this set has no elements, we call it the empty set and we can just write the empty set symbol. All right. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope this gives you a better handle on how to communicate using the language of set theory. If you do have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day.